In this video, we're going to take our dots pathfinding and apply it to units built as normal game objects. This is an excellent example of how you can mix dots with game objects by writing performance intensive operations with dots and the rest using normal game objects. Let's begin! Okay, so here's our goal. Over here I have my normal unit just being idle. This is using all of the normal systems that I normally use. So it's my normal animation system running on a game object with a simple transform. If I pause the game, yep, there it is. You can see we have the unit as a game object in our scene. So I can select it, I can inspect it, look at the children, and so on. Here you can see I have the body, which has a mesh filter and a mesh render, which is how I run my animation system. However, we can also look into the entity debugger. And in here, as you can see, we have a unit entity. So the game object has a script which holds a reference to this particular entity. Then we use this entity in order to communicate with the dot systems back and forth. So in this case, we're using dots to handle our pathfinding in super fast jobs. Then we get the resulting path back into our game object and in order to follow it. So over here, as I click somewhere, yep, there you go. The unit as a game object is moving around, but the dots pathfinding code, if we pause, here it is, we can look at the linked entity in order to see that it does have the path follow component as well as the path position dynamic buffer. So here we are using the dots pathfinding code we made in a previous video, as well as the ECS pathfinding to work with our entities. So make sure you watch those videos to see just how fast dots pathfinding is. So again, here we have the normal grid. I can right click in order to make some walls. Then I can click and it calculates the path using super fast dots pathfinding. Here we have a whole bunch of units roaming around. Everything is done using normal game objects and mono behaviors, except for the pathfinding, which is running super fast dots code. If we look in the profiler, yep, there's the pathfinding running on a burst compiled job, taking a tiny amount of time, while everything else is running on mono behaviors. So this is a great practical example of how you can mix game objects with dots in order to solve a very specific performance need. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our starting scene. Over here, I have a bunch of units just roaming around the map. And if we pause the game, yep, you can see there are no game objects in here. So all of our scene is running using pure entities. So this is the starting scene, which is where we ended up after the ECS pathfinding video. So make sure you watch that video to figure out how we got here. We have tons of units just roaming around randomly. Everything is working with dots code. So as you can see, it's insanely fast. Over here, we have a thousand units running at 80 frames per second. All right, so back in the editor here. Over here, as you can see, this is the unit that we were converting into an entity. So now let's get rid of this one. And instead, I have here my normal unit game object. So it has the normal components that I use in pretty much all game object videos. And if we test, and yep, there it is. There's my usual character just sitting around playing an idle animation. And if we pause, and yep, there it is. We can see our normal game object with the body holding the animation mesh system. If you want to learn more about how this animation system works, check the video linked in the description. It's all about dynamically modifying meshes in runtime. Okay, so here we have our character as a game object. Now let's make an entity in order to connect it with our dots pathfinding. Now in order to do that, we have essentially two options. We can create the entity from scratch or we can use the conversion workflow. Since we're working with game objects, let's go with the conversion workflow. So here we have the unit game object and inside let's create an empty game object call this our unit entity and here let's just add the convert to entity script all right so just like this we're going to have this game object be converted into an entity and if we test okay everything still runs and if we look into the entity debugger yep there it is over here we have our unit entity and as you can see it was indeed correctly converted all right awesome so now that we have our entity being converted let's make a script in order to capture the entity as it's being converted so for that let's make a new c sharp script and call this the converted entity holder. So this script will hold the entity as it's converted. Let's make sure we drag it onto the unit entity game object. Okay, and open it up. Now in here, we're going to hook into the conversion system. So in order to do that, we're going to implement I convert game object to entity. I covered this interface and a few more in the dots entity prefabs video. So check that out to learn more. Here, this function is called when the conversion system is converting this game object into an entity. So here we can simply store this converted entity and entity manager into a field. All 
All right, so that's it. So we store the converted entity. And let's also add a simple debug log just to test that this is running. Okay, that should do it. Let's test. And yep, over here in the log, we have our message. So we know our code is running. All right, awesome. Okay, so now we have this script, which holds the converted entity. And now with this, we can interact with the dots part of our game. Now let's make a script to handle our unit game object. So a new C sharp script and call it our unit game object. Let's drag it onto our game object. Okay. And now in here, let's simply start off by making a field so we can set our converted entity reference. Okay, just like this. And now in the editor, there's a script with our references and let's just drag this reference. Okay. And here with this reference, let's make a simple start. And on start, let's do a debug log of the entity that is converted. So let's also make a function to return our entity. Okay, so here we're exposing our private fields. And then in here, we're doing a debug log on the get entity. All right, so let's see this running. And yep, there you go, over here we have our log. So our mono behavior script is correctly accessing the entity that was converted. Awesome. Now, as I said, we have two options for making our entity. Now over here, we use the conversion system. So essentially we made a game object and automatically converted into an entity. So as you can see in here, it works. However, one potential issue with that approach is that it converts the base components. So over here, we end up with a ton of components that we're probably not going to need. So over here, the rotation, the scale, local to world, these are probably unnecessary. So another approach we could have taken would be to manually create the entity through our character script in here. So we would, for example, access the world, default game world, in order to access the entity manager and create an entity. So another approach would be to use this in order to create an entity completely from scratch. Again, both approaches work, so I just wanted to mention to make sure that you know you have multiple options, so just pick the one that best suits your game. All right, now that we've set this up, we can interact with dots through the entity that we converted in any way that we want. So here in our unit game object script, let's do a simple update. In our update, let's test for a input get mouse button down. So when we click on the left mouse button, then let's calculate a simple path. So for that, if you remember from the previous video, all we need to do is add the pathfinding params component. So here it is, the component that we use in order to calculate it. We have this component with a start and end position. And then we have the pathfinding component system, which runs on all the entities that have this parameter and calculates the path. So when we press on the left mouse button, let's go into the converted entity holder in order to get the entity. And we also get the entity manager. And now we use this entity manager in order to add component data onto this entity of type new pathfinding params. And we pass in a certain start position and a certain end position. All right, so here it is. When we press on the left mouse button, we're going to add a pathfinding params onto this entity. After we do that, then our pathfinding system will grab that entity and do all of its calculations. And as it calculates that, we also need the entity to have a dynamic buffer as well as the path follow component. So for those two, we can easily set them up in the editor. So back in the editor, we have our unit game object and inside we have our unit entity. And in here, we can add our path position authoring component, which will add the dynamic buffer as well as the path follow. And again, here, put it at minus one. So for starters, it has an invalid path. All right, so everything should be working. Let's test. Okay, so here we are. And first, let's look into the entity debugger. And here we are with the unit entity. And you can indeed see that it has the path follow component as well as the path position dynamic buffer. And back in the game, if we click, and yep, there you go, over here we have our path being correctly calculated. So we have the path follow, then we have our path 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 1, and 4, 0. All right, awesome. So here you can already see the interaction between game objects and dots. We have a game object which has a linked entity, and through that entity we can add components. Then the dot system runs logic on those components and puts the result back in some other component. And finally, the game object can read those components with the calculated data. So now that we have pathfinding being calculated, let's make the game object actually follow that path. And now here, when it comes to connecting our game objects with our dots code, we have a multitude of options. So the question is essentially, where should we have our connection? 
Should it be right on the pathfinding like we're doing here, so just using it to calculate? Or maybe dots should also be responsible for moving the entity and the game object that just takes the entity position. So we have several places where we can do our connection depending exactly on what our goal is. We can use more or less of the dot systems as we prefer. Here I want to do it on the simplest way possible. So all I want from dots is to calculate the pathfinding and that's it. I want the game objects with their normal mono behavior scripts to handle movement and everything else. So back in our unit game object script, let's make our follow code. Now we can do pretty much the same code that we were using when using dots. Here is our previously used path follow system, which was moving all of the entities. And let's pretty much copy all of this. So here on our update, let's put this and now let's just fix these issues. All right, so here we have our path follow code. Again, we use the entity manager that we grabbed on this script in order to get the component out of type path follow and also the path position buffer. And then we do pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference is instead of using the translation value, here we're using the transform position and everything else is pretty much the same. And again, we're doing all of this inside a mono behavior script with the game object world. The only difference is over here at the end, we need to actually tell the entity manager in order to update the path follow. So set component data. So just like this. All right, so let's test. Okay, here we are. There's our unit and click. And there you go, there's the unit working as a game object, but correctly following the path that was calculated in Unity Dots. Okay, now let's make him follow the mouse position instead. So right now we're doing this one, just sending him from a static 00 to a 40. And here we have the unit move our system that we made in a previous video, which is validating the mouse position and doing all of that. So you can pretty much use the exact same code. Let's copy all of this. All right, so over here is the script. We just grab the mouse worm position we convert that world position into a grid position and validate it. Do the same thing for the starting position, so using the transform.position. And finally, we add our pathfinding params component just like we were doing previously. All right, so let's test. Okay, so here we are and click. And yep, there you go. Now the unit is correctly going from the start position to the mouse position. So now since we're working with the normal game object, I can use my normal animation system. So for that, the game object already has the character base script. Okay, so there it is. Now again, this implementation is going to depend on what type of animation system you're using. For my animation system, which again, it is based completely on game objects and mono behaviors, all I need to do is call this function with a move direction. So this should be working, let's see. Okay, so here I are and click, and yep, there you go, he goes to the target mouse position, and he's using the nice game object based animations. And again, we still have all the pathfinding working, so let's right click to make some walls. And now let's tell him to go here, and yep, there you go, he calculates the path. And again, if we pause, we can see that this is indeed a unit game object. So here in the scene, there it is, there's the game object. But in the entity debugger, over here we can also see our unit entity. So we have a game object connected to an entity, and the entity is being used to calculate the pathfinding. So we have this working with one unit, now let's add a whole bunch of them. And yep, here we have a whole bunch of units. They're all animated, they're all working with game objects, and they're all using super fast dots pathfinding in order to calculate their path. So here you see how we can make a game completely using game objects and use dots only for very specific performance intensive operations. If we look into the profiler, and yep, there it is over here, you can see our pathfinding running on a burst compiled job, taking a tiny amount of time. So again, here we have all of the units, all made up of game objects using normal mono behaviors and using dots for pathfinding. So this is a great practical example of how you can mix game objects with dots. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters.
Go to patreon.com slash unity codemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.